Okay, so let's work through each of these stages uh, in turn. So the first stage is fetch. It is um, entirely driven by the program counter. We uh, read a bunch of bytes from uh, instruction memory at the location given by the program counter. Uh, we don't necessarily need all those bytes, but we'll go ahead and read them anyway in case we need them. Uh, and we'll talk about why we might do that uh, uh, in later days this, or later this semester. Uh, we definitely will need byte zero. That's where we'll in extract the iCode and the iFun, which are uh, various pieces of information about what kind of instruction we're doing. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and ex extract bytes one through nine, uh, and that's going to turn into RA, RB, and or R, uh, Val C depending on what kind of uh, instruction we have. So we'll have all five of these pieces of information coming out of these bytes. Uh, and then we're also going to do a little bit of logic to determine whether we actually need that valc uh, and whether we actually need the register IDs. And all that is based on uh, the kind of instruction that we're doing, which is uh, the I code. Once we have all that information, we can actually calculate the address of the next instruction, which is going to be useful uh, in a couple of different places. And so we'll go ahead and calculate the value of the, or the address of the next instruction, and that'll be val p. So that's the fetch cycle. Uh, it's worth thinking about this question here at the bottom. So which instructions have a val c? Uh, which instructions only need the i code and the i fun? Uh, and you can answer this question simply by looking across the fetch row for all of the instructions at the bottom of the Y86 reference sheet. Uh, see which ones have a val C mentioned uh, and which ones only have the iCode and, and the iFun uh, and, and the, 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 uh, the val P update. Okay, so now we have all of this information, uh, and a lot of this, uh, some of this gets fed into the next phase, which is the decode phase. So uh, here we're going to be reading from a register file. Uh, really, the only parts of this diagram that are in that are uh, of interest to us at this point are the reads. So we have RA and RB coming in, and we have the I code coming in, and then we have two little pieces of logic here which figure out which uh, registers we need uh, and passes those numbers through to the register file. And then the values of those registers come out via these uh, val A and val B signals. There's some other stuff going on here, but that has to do with writing to registers, which happens during a later phase. All right, so now we have some registers, uh, some register values potentially. Uh, that, with, uh, along with some of the other information from earlier in the fetch phase, gets fed into the execute phase. And this is the phase that actually does any sort of arithmetic or logic operation that we need. Uh, this could be also an effective address calculation or a stack pointer uh, operation. So there's actually a, quite a variety of uh, things that we use the ALU for, not just for the arithmetic and logic instructions uh, specifically. So there are going to be two inputs to the ALU. Uh, there are a couple of different pieces of information that could be in these uh, values going into the ALU. So the first input is either going to be val C, uh, if it's an immediate or an offset. It's going to be val A, if it's a register value. Uh, or it could be a constant for some instructions, uh, namely the ones that manipulate the stack. Uh, the second input is either val b or uh, it's zero. And again, all of this is determined based on the I code, which tells us uh, which of these uh, inputs we need for uh, a particular operation. Uh, we'll also use that I code uh, and the I fun to determine exactly what kind of operation or function this ALU is going to uh, execute. So it's either going to be an add, a subtract, uh, and uh, and or an XOR. So then this is actually going to perform that operation. Uh, it will have some condition codes that uh, are, are set as a result of that. Uh, we'll save those condition codes if we're doing an operation uh, that needs to save them, namely if we're doing one of the, uh, the OP um, op codes. Uh, and then that's also used to, the condition codes are also used uh, along with the iFund to calculate this Boolean uh, condition number, which is determined, which is used to determine whether or not we take conditional jumps or do conditional moves. So that's a single binary value that uh, comes out of uh, this little bit of logic. All right, and then the result of the execute is called val e. 
All right, so this brings us to the next phase, which is the memory phase. So this is where we either read or write memory. And as you'll uh, remember from a previous discussion, there is no instruction that does both. Uh, you either read or you write, you can't do both. The effective address is either uh, val E or val A, depending on which instruction we're doing. Uh, and then uh, if we're doing a data write to memory, the data to be written is either val A or val P, uh, depending on the I code. Uh, the data is always read into val M. And at this point, we can also set the CPU status code to indicate whether or not there was an error or not. All right, so now uh, we come to the second part of the register uh, file. Uh, in our uh, diagram. So the write back phase is where we take any register values that we need to save and we save them back to the register file. So uh, this is going to be val E if we're coming from uh, the ALU or val M if we're coming from memory. Uh, and of course the uh, actual register IDs are uh, coming from the uh, fetch uh, phase of the uh, CPU. Uh, and then sometimes we'll also need this condition signal to determine whether or not we're doing uh, a conditional move, for instance. Uh, and we can use uh, the value of f to disable one or more of the writes uh, for, uh, for some of the I codes. Finally, we need to calculate the new PC, uh, which in involves just taking all of these pieces uh, and using the I code to figure out uh, which of these values we want to use as the next uh, the next uh, program counter at or the address of the next instruction to execute. Sometimes this will require uh, checking the condition value as well. So uh, if we're doing a conditional jump, we need to know uh, which one we're going to. So it's either going to be val C or val P. So the next instruction or the um, jump target from the jump instruction. Um, or perhaps if we're doing a return instruction, we may want to jump to the address that was stored in memory or on the stack, in which case we'd be using uh, val m. Okay, so that is a uh, an overview of the different stages and the components, uh, and I encourage you to uh, watch through this a couple of times and make sure that uh, everything makes sense and you understand why all these lines are going uh, to the places that they're going. Uh, uh, there are a, there's a question at the bottom of each of these slides. I didn't pause to read every single one of them, but I hope that you'll uh, read through and pause the video and think about the answers to these questions. So the answers to each of the questions can be determined by looking at the rows in the Y86 uh, reference that correspond to that phase. So for instance, in order to answer this question, you would look at the PC update phase or the PC update row uh, for all of the instructions.